All right, Bo, let's first start with the obvious question. You've been with Rush Limbaugh for many, many years. What is it like to work with Rush, and what kind of guy is he? Oh, first, he is a wonderful human being. I've been with him now for almost, I think, over 30 years. See, it's hard for me to keep track. I came on when there were 56 stations, so that's what I remember. <laughs> and he is, it's a blessing to work with him. He is one of the most intense, knowledgeable, wonderful human beings I've ever had to work with. You know, most of our staff, has we've been together for, depending on when they came on, upwards, like me, of 30 years. Others came on when we started the website at uh, the 20-year mark. Our newsletter started um, a year after we got on. That staff has been the same since. We all come, we're like a very tight family, and we don't leave. <laughs> because it's so <laughs> wonderful to work with him. We've had two meetings in the entire time that we've been there. One, of course, was when he told us his diagnosis, which was one of the worst days of our, our lives. But even then, uh, we were filled with optimism. And we are optimistic right now that, uh, that Rush is going to be healed. Yeah. And as he says, you know, prayers count, and we've got millions of people praying uh, with us and for us, so it has been an interesting experience even through this. But he's, there's no way to describe it very simply. He's just one of the most awesome men that I've ever met in my life, let alone probably the most awesome broadcaster I've ever come in contact with. You know, being with him has opened a lot of doors for you. And one of those doors is the new pack, the Journey Pack. Tell me about that. New Journey Pack. NewJourneyPack.org, <laughs> New Journey Pack. What, what I decided to do, though, though is, that, is to come from behind the studio. I've been working behind the scenes for an awful long time. But this year I decided I couldn't do it anymore because someone has to actually get in the trenches to help those that are already there change this narrative about who conservatives and who Republicans are. So that is what our mission is. We are going to change the narrative. We are going to be in every blue city, in every neighborhood that we can, in underclass neighborhoods, in middle-class neighborhoods, all around, in minority neighborhoods all around the country to let our fellow citizens know who we are. Yeah. We are not the enemy. We are not these people that the Democrat Party has portrayed as being racist, bigot, and, and, and the enemy of people who have a right to the American dream just like all of us do. So that's the mission of this. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to also ensure, do our best to ensure that this president is reelected because he deserves it based on his track record. And the other thing that we're going to do is stand up as a voice when our fellow conservatives are attacked, like Rush, like Sean, like any of the other conservative media figures, we are there to push back. You know, there's a lot of historical significance about the Republican Party being called the Party of Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Talk about that and what that means. Look, the, uh, the Republican Party was born as a counter to the Democrat Party, which was the party of slavery, which is the party of Jim Crow, including current day Jim Crow. If it were not for the Republican Party, the Civil Rights Bill of 1964 would not have been passed. It was passed with Republican votes over the objections of Democrats. Republicans have stood for the republic, for freedom, for liberty, for those people in our country to access their full birthright as American citizens to have a peace of the American dream. And so what we're doing is reestablishing that connection with minority voters and also with conservatives all around the country. This is what Republicans have been about. Now, if people want to say that sometimes Republicans have gone shy and left that message, okay, that's fine. But we're here to reestablish that connection. It is a historical connection. That's why this party was born. That is our legacy, and that's our mission. Yeah. You know, the conservatives, uh, a lot of conservatives are called racist. Even the president has been called racist. Do you think that's a fair assessment? And if, if not, why? Oh, absolutely not. Um, <clears throat> people that call you, number one, the, the term racist has been used by Democrats to define Republicans in part to hide their own past, which, again, is the party of Jim Crow. You know, Woodrow Wilson resegregated the government and he, right today, has celebrated in Washington, D.C. with the Woodrow Wilson Center. You have a party, the Republican Party, that has been 
in the forefront of trying to deliver things that change people's lives. Go back to when George W. Bush was uh, was president, and they were talking about Social Security. Now, this is this is kind of a little bit in the weeds, so just stick me with this. Black men have the shortest lifespan of most measurable groups in America. So if you're a black guy, you work all your life, you put your money in Social Security, chances are you will die before you receive the benefit of that. What George Bush's plan was, was to try to let you keep that money as an investment and be able to pass it along to your children to create wealth. Democrats stand against that. That is institutional racism. When you tell mothers that they cannot send, send their own children to the school of their choice, mm. which is what the Democrat Party does, that is institutional racism. It is stopping you from exercising your freedom. Republicans stand in the forefront in terms of policy of freedom, of liberty, and that should in and of itself discount any perception that we're a racist, a bunch of racists. People say that we're a divided country. How did we get here? We've always been a divided country. We have all, America was born a divided country. If you go back and look at the founders, <laughs> it's so amazing. You'll see that even President Washington had detractors. One of them was a guy that he thought was a son to him almost, Thomas Jefferson. This country has been divided from its birth. We had, this is why we couldn't address the, save, the, the slavery issue at the, found, the founding of this country, but we did have a mechanism that our founders put in place, which was a self-correcting mechanism that we could amend our Constitution. And because of that, we were able not only to correct what could not politically be accomplished at our birth, but to eventually become the country that spread freedom throughout the world. We have an amazing history. We changed the course of human existence. America did that. But America has been divided from the very beginning, and I dare say long after we are all gone, America will still be divided. We will have people on both sides of the political divide or a few sides of a political divide. Yeah. You've been a member of the media for a long, long time, so you've watched this up close and personal. When did we get to the point where the media is where they are today, where it, they're really a mouthpiece for the left? The mainstream media is that, <clears throat> but here's why I'm hopeful. We have an alternative media now. And I don't think we in the alternative media give ourselves enough credit. Okay, yeah, the New York Times is out there doing what they do, uh, along with the LA Times, all those on, on the left in print. And then you have ABC, NBC, CBS, and that bunch. And then you have the assorted left-wing radio stations. But look what has happened. We have so many conservatives now that for a while Fox was considered to be a conservative television station. And there are still a lot of conservatives that are looking at Fox and looking at other outlets that have sprung up now. We own talk radio. We have a stable footing on the Internet. We are, conservatives are all over new media and streaming media. Now, Hollywood, yeah, left still owns Hollywood, but guess what? There are more independent productions coming. There are more conservative kids, young kids coming up in a generation that are not ashamed to be conservative, yeah. that have a very activist attitude, and they are forming companies in the media. So. The, the media is left, the mainstream media is left wing, but now there is so much competition. And a lot of that, by the way, is due to Rush. Mm -hmm. And that may sound a little self-serving, but it's not. You know, when Rush Limbaugh started the show, there were 1,200 radio stations doing talk. Today, there are over 12,000. There was no Fox News. Roger Ailes, who, as we all know, was the, the, the founder, if you want to, of Fox News, had produced Russia's TV show before then, and they worked together. He saw that market because of what he did with Rush. Mm. And as some of the others that are not ashamed will tell you, that are not full of ego, will tell you that Rush was instrumental in transforming not just the radio industry, but the television industry as well yeah. with what he did. Yeah, yeah. Final question. Some people 
have said that America's best days are behind them. Do you believe that? And if not, why? No. America's best days still are ahead of us. And you know what? Every time it appears that we're on the brink of maybe losing our freedom, something kicks in. I, be I firmly believe that this nation was born of, with divine providence, that God had a major hand in making sure that this nation was able to not only come into existence, but survive all of the perilous times that it's been through. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that hand is still here and that hand is still watching over us. No matter how bad we may disobey, no matter how bad as human beings we may go off there is still enough God's spirit in America and enough of providence looking over this country that we come back from the brink. Many will say that's why we have the president that we have now. He might be an imperfect messenger in, in some of their views, but boy, has he delivered on things like uh, the, the, the right to life, our most basic right as Americans, the right to life liberty, pursuit of happiness. And you look at conservatives who are doubtful of this president and then look at what he's done. Right now, the left is freaking out just over what he's done with the courts. You tell me that there isn't a hand looking over us, saving us from ourselves. I believe there is, and I believe America's best days are, are in the future and to come. Sir, thank you. I appreciate your time. My and pleasure. appreciate what you've been doing. Thank, thank you, you so much.